We're here today at one of our customers, working with them, looking at their ready mix operations. And I'm here with Todd Cope from our team. Being a part of Stockpile Reports has given me an opportunity to truly recognize the positive impacts it can have on a ready mix business, specifically related to inventory. My history is uh, being a district manager for a ready mix company, understanding the importance of having enough or having too much inventory can affect your bottom line, your, your cost per yard. So Todd, a ready mix plant is a very complex operation. <laughs> lots of moving parts, lots of equipment, lots of people. But at the end of the day, it seems like it's a pretty simple business and that you've got to look at how much you can sell the, the concrete for or, or your average selling price. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to add up all your costs and you've got your cost per yard and you take that difference and you know that's your profit. So I imagine that senior managers, you know, they're really honed in on that ASP and cost per yard. Absolutely, they're laser focused on it. They can take a look at that from a very high level and identify where you're being efficient or not being efficient. So you're constantly in tune with maximizing opportunities to improve efficiencies. One may be your inventory control, one may be your ASP, Am I getting enough for that product, the average selling price? But you're right, that cost is laser focused when you're talking executives being able to identify efficiencies at a ready mix operation. So Todd, with average selling price, what are the types of things that impact or that you have control of, or maybe you don't have control of, that uh, allow you to maximize your average selling price? Well, there are three main components to that equation that we look at initially. A lot of other variables come to mind, but one of them's location, the other one's the type of the concrete, and then the volume. So when you're talking about location, you're able to service it better if it's closer to your plant, you're sure. utilizing your resources more efficiently. The type of concrete could be a high early mix, very temperamental, very uh, QC related, requires a lot of resources to manage that, that product. The other one's the volume. You may have a large job that you're bidding that's going to positively affect your ASP because volume solves problems in ready mix. Got it. So cost per yard. Mm -hmm. So what are the major components of cost per yard that people try to manage or control? The two main components are your labor and your materials. Okay. So labor, how efficiently are you utilizing your labor? Whether it be in the production or the delivery process, those have got to be fine-tuned. Everybody's got to have the understanding and the same goal that we're going to do this as efficiently as possible. The other one is your uh, material cost. Materials being your aggregates, your cement, admixtures. Have we got too much? Do I have enough? Too much can cause issues. Let's talk about inventory and its impact on cost per yard. Mm -hmm. um, when you're looking at your bins and bunkers and you're trying to make sure that you're not running out, you're trying to keep that you know, right amount, how does the inventory on hand impact your cost per yard? Your cost per yard is your material cost, you pull that out of your cost for the complete yard of concrete. That includes your sand, your aggregates, your cement. If you are sitting on too much inventory, you're paying for that ahead of time. Why do that? So just-in-time inventory, depending on how much you have to produce, that relates entirely to your cost per yard and the cost of the materials. Okay, so if I'm running a little full in my bunkers then, what you're telling me is my cost per yard that I'm looking at a monthly, quarterly, annual basis is going to be higher? Yes. So if I could get that volume down, I'm buying less material, then, then my cost per yard would go down? Correct. Got it. Todd, if we know that if, if you run your inventory a little bit leaner, that that's going to improve your cost per yard metric, which is going to improve your profitability, you know, why don't ready mix plants run a, a little bit leaner on their inventories? Uh, that's a great question, David. Um, inherently in the ready mix industry, it's always been the fear of running out. And for these guys running this plant, they find comfort in knowing that those bunkers are full because now they've got enough material to make that product. Should they run out in the middle of a pour, it could have substantial impact to the company from lost revenue, lost customer, so on and so forth. Back charges, it's not a good thing. So these guys don't 
want to have that issue ever come up. Right, so you would much rather have a little bit of insurance policy in material, but then you've got to say, well, what's that impact to my cost per yard, and is it worth the insurance cost to make sure that those things don't happen? Absolutely, it affects your cost per yard tremendously because you have to pay for that even before it hits that bunker. Do you think that that's a conscious decision? Do people uh, state, is there a certain number of days or a certain number of weeks of buffer that they want, or is it less formal than that? My experience is more of a trust situation between sales and operations. Do I really trust what sales is telling me that I need for that, to make that volume of product for ReadyMix? Do I really need 2,000 tons of sand over there? Probably not. Fear of running out, that's an interesting term. Uh, we've heard of the fear of missing out from social media yeah. and causing people to constantly be on their devices, but you've used the word fear of running out. So let's talk about that. So what are, what are some of the worst things that could happen if you did run out? If you run out, initially the uh, ramifications are gonna be dollar signs. How much is this gonna cost me? because I'm running out during the middle of a pour, whether it be a slab or a wall, or even something, it could be you're replacing a panel on I-5 and there's liquidated damages there. So if you want to start talking about impact and when that happens, the trickle down effect comes into play and it generally ends up on these guys' shoulders. Why did you run out? They're afraid as hell to run out of material. And that's why you see twice as much inventory in these bunkers than what you truly need to produce the yardage. That make, makes sense. So it sounds like the fear of running out, <laughs> you could potentially impact customer satisfaction. You might lose that next contract. You might have to go out and fix something, like you said, that could cost you five, ten, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, right? Uh, you, there might even be some, some penalty Li clauses in the contracts. Liquidated damages. Right, you so you can guarantee uh, I would imagine if I were in the seat running the plant that you definitely wouldn't want to run out. No. No, that is not a good thing. Not in our industry. You've got me scared now. I, uh, I, I'm fully into the fear of running out mode now. So I don't want to run out, but then the finance group's telling you to run super lean because we want to look good on that annual report with our cost per yard, right? So <laughs> what, what would it look like to run lean what would be different running lean is compared to what you have to produce out of that plant that plant's going to tell you exactly how much aggregate cement admixture you need to make that otherwise why even put together a mixed design so you know these numbers ahead of time the fear comes in from uh, you know when you get into situations where you have a lot of cod business cash on delivery you have to anticipate that so what does that look like over here? Well, you have the history and the data to determine that in February, my COD business is 1,000 yards a month. In June, my COD business is 500 yards a month. So you, you can always put that information to work for you and determine how much inventory you really need. So a key element to running lean is being able to know what you need, it sounds like predicting demand to a bit, having some sort of model you can work from. And then somehow knowing that you're, how you're tracking against that plan, right? And my understanding today is most of it's a lot of just looking out of the trailer window or looking out of the truck window and just guessing what's there. And people are really good at guessing, oh, yeah. in my experience. But it sounds like if you really wanted to run lean and I've got a big fear of, of running out, uh, man, I'm probably going to order just that extra load or two just to give myself that little cushion. But then that creates that tension at the cost per yard versus the fear of running out. That, that must be really hard to do if the boss tells you to run lean. It's tough to manage, it really is. But once again, once you have the data to support how much I need to produce that many yards of concrete based on those mixed designs, that number should be directly related to that number. Got it. So, on, do you have a sense for, on average, what people like to run with in, in, in reserves? Do they tend to run with a couple days, a couple weeks, a couple months? You know, how fat can these inventories get at ready-mix plants? Well, my experience has been a week. 
a week. You want to generally a, an additional week worth of material because you don't know when you're going to get a truck. They may get called off to another job. So there's the fear factor again, right? Okay. Oh, maybe I'm going to lose my trucks. Okay. Oh, I better get it in now because I'm hearing that construction is going to go hot and heavy the next week. So that's where all these variables come into play. So most ready mix plants are running maybe a week. Gives them that little cushion if a truck gets pulled off somewhere else, they could live an extra day or two. Yeah. So in theory, if I were to push you, at what point, you know, what if we got it down to four days or three days or two days? How much does your blood pressure start going up uh, when you're starting to think about the fear of running out? How many days do you think you'd be comfortable with if you were the one running the plant? Once again, it's the, uh, the trust factor, you know. Once I trust the information and the data, my blood pressure will go down. Okay. But right now, in the industry as it is, across the industry, more is better. And a week lets you sleep. A week will let me sleep very nicely, yes. And two weeks would probably let you go on vacation. Go on vacation <laughs> until I got that call from my boss saying, what the hell are you doing with all that inventory? Okay, so a couple weeks, you're really relaxed, a week, you're, you're sleeping at night. If you're down to two or three days, you're probably getting a little nervous. Starting to get a little nervous. Okay. But if you had the information and you had confidence and trust in your deliveries, then maybe you could sleep someday in the future if we got down to three days or two days, one? I don't know. But there's probably going to be some boundary somewhere that the reality of the technology and the world is going to come into play that gives people comfort. I don't think we'll ever know that question until we do it. Okay. We have to do it. We have to push those limits to get it down to a day. Yes, it's gonna have everybody on pins and needles, but once you trust the information, okay, now we're three, now we're two, now we're one. Everybody still okay? Okay. It sounds like if we got to that world, I'm gonna guess executives would be ecstatic <laughs> because their cost per yard is gonna look better. I would imagine the finance people are probably having a party back at the office, but I imagine that it would create a lot of tension and a lot of stress from the people out doing the day-to-day -day jobs because you are running a lot leaner and man, that's in conflict with that instinctual fear of running out that we have as people. So it will be interesting to see how it plays out. Instinctual fear, that's a good term, exactly. So I can imagine someday in the future, you know, it could be really scary for these guys if, you know, when the machines take over. <laughs> when artificial intelligence is analyzing, you know, the weather, the complete needs of every job, you know, every plant, and suddenly the humans have let go and the machines are making decisions, you know, <laughs> I imagine for a while that'd be really nerve wracking, but eventually I would imagine it'd be comforting to know that just, hey, every time you go to take a scoop, there's gonna be something there. Right, and whether it's, you know, looks like there's three scoops left, but the computers know that, hey, a truck's about to show up in five minutes, relax, be calm, you know? But I imagine it's gonna take a while for that trust to be established between information and people who have worked the business this way for 100, 100 years. 100 years. Uh, that's gotta be a, that's gonna be a difficult change, I would imagine. Yeah, it's gonna be a major cultural change. All these guys are gonna, go through that transformation. Imagine I'm a front loader driver and I see that there's only about four scoops left. Imagine, imagine their heart rate, imagine their pulse, imagine their stress, imagine their worry, right? But imagine a future where the software and the systems are managing everything and, and, and they can just guarantee them that there's always the next scoop, right? But imagine that change of going from that fear of a limited resource kicking into your instincts versus just trusting and knowing that that scoop's gonna be there. That's gonna be a massive change. It's gonna be substantial and there's no reason like a site like this could totally be automated. So you have your deliveries go to a drive over, they put it into bunkers, they could, now the batch man could hit a button and say, all right, I need three quarter into that plant and you can design this plant to where it's totally automated. You wouldn't have to have a loader out here picking up material and putting it in a popper. That's gonna be the next transformation based off of the technology that's coming.
how much labor and brain power and time do you think would be saved in that future world where there's always the next scoop and people didn't have to make the phone calls and have the stress and the worry and the performance coaching conversations. Do you have any idea how much time and money spent on that on a daily basis? You know, from a, from a labor standpoint, uh, if you have the vision that this can be automated, that plan can be automated, all it needs to be is maintained, right? So you can take a look at how much maintenance are they doing now? You can take that number of maintenance and now that's your labor cost. That information's there. So if you put it into real numbers, it would be a day a week. So 80 hours of labor per week, wow, would be the total amount of labor to run the operations of the site. The delivery is a totally different story. Amazing. Well, you think of how much time and energy in people's lives used to be spent when you had to get your own food, right? You know, a couple hundred years ago, and how that, you know, totally transformed civilization. I can imagine it's kind of an extreme analogy, but when you don't have to worry about the next scoop and you're running a plant like this, I would imagine it would allow you to focus a lot of energy and a lot of brain power on more productive topics and issues and challenges than, oh my gosh, you know, are we gonna get the next scoop? Those resources can be applied in so many different areas and utilized. You know, it's not about reducing the headcount, it's about optimizing efficiencies and taking those resources and using them to optimize efficiencies because there's always gonna be the next. What is the next? You know, how are we gonna apply it or, or resources to that to, to have a strategic advantage in the industry. So from what you just told me, it sounds like there's still a lot of opportunity to improve the production planning process and mapping out you know, exactly what mixes are gonna be run for how many hours on what days. But it seems like once that's nailed down and once the next scoop is always guaranteed you know, through an automated you know, logistics scenario, mm -hmm then it seems like there could be a tremendous amount of automation. Absolutely. And so what is your vision of a plant of the future? Like if we were imagining a ready mix plant 20 years from now, um, what's it gonna look like around here? I think the autonomous, you know, we can get into that whole equation when it comes to transporting the material to the site. But beyond that, this site could be set up, like I said, very automated, drive over to a bunker, auto load, you know, and once, once the salesperson in this world puts a contract into SAP, that should flow right into the whole total automation from delivery of the aggregate, the cement, the admixtures, all automated. It should feed into that plant automated because the plant's telling it, I need X amount of tons of this, X amount of tons of that. And now it's all computerized anyhow. So as soon as we get to the point to where we can trust it, it'll be automated. Yeah. Makes sense. And then put it in the truck from there on in, you know, that's the next phase. Makes sense. And there are some plants that are already set up with, you know, vertical storage of aggregates that take their deliveries on a drive over and it automatically feeds the egg bins on the plant. What percentage of plants are set up that way? Is it five percent? Five percent. So it's still small. Yeah, it's a it's a capital investment on the front end, but the return on that is pretty substantial. Not only from a labor standpoint, but from a quality standpoint. Well, we had a vision as a company. You know, it was early back. I remember giving a talk at uh, the Washington Aggregate Association, talking about how within ten years, every you know point that we can see here would be modeled in accurately in 3D every second of every day. And I think we're on the track to that. And you know, clearly sure we've been working like on the image side of it and getting pictures with low cost cameras, whether that's you know phones, drones, installed cameras, wearable hammer, cameras on the hat, um, it's coming. And it feels like once we have that data layer where everything is digital, we know where everybody is in the plant. We know where all the equipment is. We know all the inventory levels. We know the moisture levels and the water levels flying out of here. And all of this is ones and zeros and digital. Then it seems like we finally have the data 
to then start to run those algorithms to establish trust, right? Because right now it feels like we have a lot of point technologies, but we can't just trust them, right? We just can't go fishing nope. <laughs> and just be relaxed knowing that everything's going to work because we have lots of technologies, but it seems like the people still need to do a lot of punching of those technologies, a lot of moving things from here to there, flipping things on and off, and lots of things still break. So it seems like we still have a little ways to go. Uh, but I would imagine within another 10 years, your vision would be very doable. I, I say it's uh, it, it's very close to being to that reality. And it's in, in some areas you'll see that some of them are embracing it. And But you're right. The more information they have and they're able to manipulate it, absorb it, trust it, it it's just a matter of time. And I see that happening very soon. It's not hard to imagine. I mean, ReadyMix companies have 50 sites, 100 sites, uh, 500 sites, more globally. So you can imagine if you could get the materials down from running thick to running lean, it's not hard to come up with $10 million or more uh, that you could free up to use for something else. What do you think a ReadyMix company would do with an extra $10 million in a year? You're absolutely right, David. They're always looking for those opportunities to uh, drive those efficiencies. What you can do with it, you can put more money back into the shareholders' pockets. Okay. You can show that you're a more profitable, stronger business at a global scale. Mm -hmm. uh, but from my standpoint as a district manager, I'm going to want to replace that truck or four of those trucks or rebuild this plant, whether it be the drum, the mixer on it needs to be relined, whether the egg bins need to be relined. I'm going to look at those things to make sure that this plant is fully functional and fully ready at a moment's notice. So based on our experience today, uh, most of the industry still is doing, you know, the day to day with the truck driver reporting in. They're doing the monthlies by pushing the piles up and, you know, counting blocks, things like that. But we do have many customers at Stockpile Reports that are doing the inventory for, with finance on the quarterly basis who are pushing to monthly at the ready mix plants. Mm -hmm. And we're hearing feedback that just by having good, confident data on that monthly basis, it's starting to chip away at the fear of running out, right? They're getting more confident in the data that's in their information systems. It's more available, more transparent. And so people are starting to make some decisions based off of data that's always available that they trust. And we, and we are hearing that that is resulting in companies running a little bit leaner. For the future, we're looking at installing fixed cameras at sites like this. For the future, you're going to use fixed installed cameras at a site like this. We're actually running this today. We've been mm -hmm. running for close to six or nine months with some companies and pilots, installing cameras and generating measurements every 15 minutes. Now that's not just chipping away at the fear of running out, that's stomping on the fear of running out, right? Because now you've got the data that people can trust, that's accurate in the systems, that's freeing up all kinds of brain power, all kinds of resources to work on higher value things for the company. And it won't be long before I imagine we're taking in the imagery from the cameras that are gonna be on people's hard hats and the cameras that are on these trucks and the cameras that are on the front loader. So we don't even have to install cameras and you're just gonna get data continuously on your ready mix levels. So the future is just around the corner. It's bright and I imagine it's only gonna be a matter of a few years before every ready mix plant wants to eliminate the fear of running out and has that good data you know, every 15 minutes, every minute even, we'll see what the right threshold is that allows them to reduce their cost per yard and take that fishing trip and not have that fear of running out just eating at them in the back of their, their head. It'll revolutionize the uh, industry.